today we're going to be talking about how to raid in the game Rust. We're going to be talking about everything from your sort of silent raids to your melee weapon raids or your spear raids to a sort of advanced raid that uses C4 or rocket. This guide is not going to have any information for some of you more expert or advanced players. I do appreciate the support if you're watching the video, but I just want to let you know up front, this might not be for you. I do appreciate subs still, so um, yeah, leave them if you got them and uh, let's get into it. So first off, the easiest raid that you've got in the raid that sort of most players start off with is a spear raid or just sort of picking out walls. You can do this fairly easily on Twig, which you just saw. If you're going to a wood structure, it is a lot harder. You just saw how many tries it took with that spear to even do one damage. If you've got a gun or a weapon that does more damage, you are gonna be damaging the wall faster. That just makes sense. Once you get into a stone wall or something like that, it is gonna be much harder, but you still could pick it away if you had more time than Jeff Bezos if time was money. But you know, you can go for it if you want to. I'm. I'm definitely judging you if you try that. Um, once you get above a stone wall, what you're gonna find is you're not doing damage to it. Once you get to a metal or a armored wall, your guns, your spears, your weapons, they are not gonna be doing any damage unless you are using the right type of ammunition. So it's sort of useless once you get to this stage. And one, even, even with stone, it's useless. One caveat to note with wood is that you can light wood on fire using the right type of ammunition or, you know, a bow and arrow that can do that and um, that's definitely worth trying. Now let's get into sort of soft side picking. So a soft side on wood is gonna look like this. It's just the soft side of wood. This is a hard side of wood. It is gonna be way more efficient. So if a soft side is exposed and this is the same applies for stone too, by the way, you can soft side pick a stone wall. So when a soft side is exposed and you can see what I'm looking at here, this is a soft side. You can pick it out much easier at this point. It actually might be worth going at it with the spear if you're someone like Waylon and you're making a ton of money in your videos and it's worth taking 10 hours to do something like this. Um, anyways, once you get to something like a metal wall, you can do some damage hitting it from the soft side, but it just isn't worth it. So now let's get into your sort of proper raiding. When it comes to raiding, you've got a bunch of different doors. You've got double doors and single doors. They're gonna take the same amount of damage based on what that door type is. So you've got wood, you've got your metal doors, you've got your garage doors. Those are only for double doors. And then you've got your armored doors. Whether it is a single door or a double door, it does not matter from a raider's point of view. So you don't need to put a preference in either door. You can do a single door or you can do a double door. It doesn't really matter whichever one you sort of want to raid. That's what you should be going with. Uh, when it comes to wood doors, these are pretty easy to bang away at. You can do it with a gun. You can do it with a spear. You can do it with any sort of melee weapon or any weapon in general. You're going to be doing damage to that door. Once you get to a metal door, you can't really do damage to it with whatever you've got. One thing to remember with a double door though is sometimes people do construct them improperly. They will leave this sort of base piece as twig. If that is the case, you can actually pick out that twig. The door is going to be destroyed and you have access to their base. A lot of new players make this mistake. So if you are a new player, take note and don't make this mistake. And if you see it in a server, if you're a good guy, if you're a nice guy, if you're a good person, you're going to tell them and you're going to say, hey, dude, you should have upgraded this because otherwise some asshole is going to come along and, you know, wreck your world. Now, if you're that asshole, you can go ahead and do this and pick through the door and uh, you're wrecking someone's world. They're gonna log in and they're gonna be very disappointed because they gave you an easy raid when they didn't want to do that. So now let's go into sort of the tools of the trade when it comes to raiding. These are what you're really gonna use to blow through doors. You've got a bean can grenade, you're not gonna be using that. You got a satchel charge, probably shouldn't be using that. You've got explosive rounds, you might be using those. You've got C4 and then you've got rockets. Now, when it comes to a bean can grenade, there's gonna be guides that show you how many it takes to blow open a door or anything like that. I'm not gonna do that video. I'm just gonna talk you through raid. So a bean can grenade is gonna do some damage damage to wood doors, metal doors, all that, but not too much. It's not worth it because it makes too much noise. A satchel charge is something that you might want to utilize if you're very new and you can't get any farther than this, or if you're early game. So if you're really early into a wipe, maybe an hour or two, and you want to blow away someone's door, you can use a satchel charge to easily blow away a wood door. But in addition to that, you can blow up metal doors too. So four satchel charges, put them against the metal doors. They go off randomly. So there's a random timer on it. So they could go off and kill you. Keep that in mind because that can really suck if you you go in with a ton of satchel charges, one blows off and kills you, everybody hears it, you're dead, someone runs up, loose your body, and that's that. Now, one thing to remember when it does come to satchel charges is, that, is that in addition to that randomized timer, sometimes they do not detonate. So in this case, you're gonna see I put four satchel charges on the door. They're blowing off at random times. It's a long wait, but one did not go off. I'm gonna go up, pick it up, and throw it back onto the door. Again, this is time that you're wasting to 
get through that door. So be careful with satchel charges. They're good early game. They can get you a little bit of a leg up on your neighbor's early game. But once you get past that early game, anyone who hears satchel charges, they sort of assume a newbie's raiding and they're just gonna go for it because they know it's um, sort of free loot. So next, let's go into raiding with explosive ammo. Explosive ammo can blow through walls, doors, anything that you want. It's gonna make a lot of noise. People are gonna hear you and it's not as efficient as C4. Maybe they're gonna think that you're doing something else, but it's just not as efficient. If you put a silencer on, however, it's a lot harder for people to hear you raiding or going through a door. So when it comes to silent raiding, this is how you do it. Use explosive ammo and a gun with a silencer. You blow through that door silently and then you see what's on the other side. Obviously, if there's shotgun traps or something like that, it alerts everyone. This is gonna be when you sort of switch your C4 and just go brute force it. But if there aren't any traps or anything like that, you can just sort of silently raid through a base and the neighbors might be online, but they might never hear it. Next up, you have C4 in rockets. These are gonna be your loud raids. They're gonna be your proud raids. They're gonna be your raids that the neighbors know what's going on and they come to investigate. So make sure you're prepared. A rocket does splash damage. So one rocket could take out two doors. In the case of C4, one C4 charge will take out one metal door. This is just talking about metal doors. When you get to garage doors, you get to armor doors. It's gonna take something like, I think two C4 charges or something like that. It takes a bit more but it's still pretty good bang for your buck. You can go through these doors a lot faster than you could with anything else, but it does make a lot of noise and the noises that rockets and sort of C4 makes are very distinct. So once people hear it, they know a raid's going on. So let's go ahead and do the armor door here. You can see I set off one charge, armor door is still around, throw another charge on. And again, these are time charges, which is nice because they take a specific amount of time. So you've got time to run, time to clear, time to you know give yourself a little bit of space, unlike satchel charges, which could randomly go off. But remember people hear those noises they know what's going on so once you get into a raid once you start setting stuff up know that it's go time know that you need to be ready to go now let's go into how you should be analyzing a raid and how you should sort of prepare for a raid so here we've got a base that if you're blowing through the doors it looks crazy this base has a ton of doors it has no loot so you're gonna be very disappointed if you do blow through these doors but yeah this, this base in general is just a crazy base that it seems like it would take you a couple satchel charges to blow through uh, not satchel charges it would take you a lot of c4 to blow through more than it's worth but if we go to the top you can see here there is a weakness if you look at this you can see sort of the main squares these main four squares that's where you want to attack these four squares are going to be where the tool cupboard is and the tool cupboard is what you want to get to when you're raiding if you can get to a tool cupboard tool cupboard you destroy it and you place down your own tool cupboard now what you can do is you can take your time raiding because you can fill yourself in on the base you just put your wall in or whatever it is and then you raid your way out which is a lot easier because now you don't have to worry about people attacking you you just have to worry about going through the internals of the base so there you can see you can use c4 blow through a uh, ceiling tile that you think is lucrative and then you just drop down and get what you've got. Um, in addition to this, with rockets, you have the advantage of they do splash damage. So what you can do is if you got a sort of four tile thing like this, you shoot the middle of those four tiles, it's gonna do splash damage to all four tiles. And now when you break through one roof tile, you're breaking through all of them. So now all of a sudden you've got access to this whole two by two area. Four squares, four possible abilities of where the tool cupboard could be. And yeah, it's really exciting when you can do that. Uh, one thing to note is if you do like shoot in the wrong area so if you shoot like the middle of a tile you still will be doing splash damage but it won't be as efficient so in this case you see i blew out one tile that i was attacking two tiles next to it but that diagonal tile didn't quite go if you are wondering how you can prevent this the easy way to prevent this is to do something like this so you're just putting a cross down it's going to be using those half walls or even those like quarter walls or whatever you want to call them now when i do damage to one tile it splashes to those like half walls instead of the nearby tiles and what this means is it now becomes a lot more costly to raid using rockets also some cool tips use your hammer you can see sort of how someone built so if you're looking for secret rooms or anything like that you can use a hammer to outline the areas and here you can see that's sort of a interesting area maybe there's a tool covered there maybe there's some secret loot but that would probably be where you want to blow into in addition to that you can use fire ammo on wood or any sort of incinerary incinerary ammo on wood and that's going to light it on fire which will do some damage Damage, which makes it like, more effective to take down. And when it comes to rockets, if you line your rockets up like this, you can go through them rapid fire and do a raid a lot faster than if you just had one rocket and you were consistently reloading it. Again, this would be using those rockets to blow through to a C TC, jumping down, claiming the TC and putting it on because obviously once you've blown through all these rockets, you are gonna have to reload. Anyways, I uh, hope this video helped. If it did, please hit the like button. I do a ton of Rust videos. So if you hit the subscribe button, you are gonna see more of those videos. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace.